Hey everybody, it's Brian. Today we'll be discussing converting jar files into EXEs. Why would you want to convert a jar file in the first place? It's already been converted. Well, let's say you want to hand this off to your friend and they don't really understand command lines or jars or Java or anything. They just want it to run. Well, in Windows, you have an EXE. You just want to double click it and run it. Now, Doing a simple search for Java EXE shows a huge list of things, and a lot of these cost money. Today we'll be looking for one, one of my personal favorites called Launch for Java. And you see it's launch4j.sourceforge.net. And you go to the site and just download. I've already downloaded it, but I'm just kind of showing you the website what you can kind of expect. Just click download now and this is a cross-platform compiler meaning it can go on just about any operating system now I've already created a jar file and this is the jar we're gonna work with now this jar file just is simply prints out you know hello from Java here's launch for Java I'm using 3.01 it's a zip file just extract it and then go into the folders you see a lot of these things <clears throat> really what you need to know is that it comes in jar format and exe. They believe they actually created this exe using Launch4j. So yes, this is a Java program. This is just an example of what Java programs can do. So double click Launch4j and it comes up with this big ominous looking window. We're gonna go over some of these things here. All these tabs are different uh, different variables you need to set. We're gonna go over them real quickly. So output file, this is what you're building. What do you want to make? We'll call it test.exe. And the jar file you want to use. There's our wintest.jar. And you have the option of don't wrap the jar launch only. Um, what are they talking about here? Well, basically what you're doing is you're taking the jar file and wrapping it inside of an exe so the user never sees the jar file. You have the option of not doing that and just making an exe that calls the jar file. You can specify a manifest, an icon, change the directory, give it command line arguments, uh, set the process priority. I mean, you can do a lot of different things. We're not going to really go over these. We're just going to keep it basic for this tutorial. Class path, I don't recommend you mess around with this. This is if you want to override the class path header. Um, this is something we should talk about. Header type, you're actually compiling something here. These are O files or object files, meaning you're actually calling a compiler in the background and generating an exe. This is a GUI or a console. We have a console. What you're looking at here is a GUI. When we run our Java program, it's in a console. So we're going to select console. Don't worry about single instance. Now, JRE, if we try to just compile this right now, notice how it says specify minimum JRE version. You can't just type 1.0 because it wants a specific format. Should be x.x.x. .x .x. So it's looking for, you know, 1.0.0. That's the minimum JRE it'll want. You can set environmental variables, a splash screen, uh, version information and different messages the user will see. We're just going to stick with the basic settings for this tutorial. Go ahead and hit compile. Now it's going to want you to save it. I've already done it. Now you notice down at the bottom here it says compiler resources linking wrapping. What does all this mean? Well, it creates the resources out of the jar file, links it all together, and then wraps it into an exe, and then it creates our exe, in this case test.exe. So when we go back here, now we suddenly have test.exe. And you run that and well, window popped up and disappeared so fast you couldn't really see it. So we're going to just copy, cd, paste, dir, and you see there's our test.exe. So when we type test, hello from Java. So you can, you know, just proof of concept here, you can actually delete these and see that just test.exe is there and when you run it, it runs fine. Now you will know, you will need to have your end user <clears throat> have a Java runtime environment installed. You can't just hand them the exe and expect it to run, they have to have Java installed. So that's something to note. 
This is Brian, and today we covered uh, converting a jar file into an EXE. I hope you found this video educational and entertaining. Thanks.